What is Radix DLT? Radix is next generation parallel sharding smart contract platform aiming to be the next standard in the centralized finance. Radix is still the world record holder in publicly demonstrated transactions per second with their old consensus protocol called Tempo. And this video is from the auditioned test. Now, if you look at the transaction speeds, we're currently and consistently running at over a million transactions per second. This is an absolute first in the crypto world and absolutely brilliant. Radix is a work in progress and is expected to be completed within the next few years. And in my review, we are going to talk about everything important about this ambitious project. Looking at the team's page on Radix website, the core team hasn't changed the last year. Spearheading the project is Pierce Ritiard, a CEO with some experience in the industry. He was the helm of Nifty for nearly five years, and now he has stepped up to take on this major undertaking leading Radix. The crypto experience, whether you're a user, a developer, or an entrepreneur, is shit. He seems to have improved his communication expression with the community a lot over the past year. I am so excited to start using the Radix wallet. I'm even more excited to start exploring the new Radix ecosystem from that wallet. All of that starts when the next version of the Radix mainnet ships. The mainnet release is going to be called Babylon. Pierce's Rad 5 videos are humorous, straightforward, and attractive to a wide range of viewers. Join us today. You're still early, but not for long. Dan, the founder of Radix, with truly extensive experience from tech industry, is appearing more sporadically on videos these months, attending only technical AMAs. Well, we're just going to kick ass, man. You know? There's obs, obs. I mean, when Babylon lands, it's game over, right? That's like. That space, however, is perfect for him to demonstrate his technologically galactic brain. So what happens if Russia is, say, 50% of the network, right? right? Um, well, then, both of your petitions, they can't do anything. Now, that's, that's called a strong safety guarantee, because while nothing is happening, nothing can be undone either. Yes, yeah, so everything just stops. And so, in the worst case, you'd have to have hard forks for both of them, right? Sophie Duncan, the chief operations officer, has been notably absent from Radix's videos. From her resume, we can see her background as a manager and a consultant from a multiple companies such as Startup Bootcamp or Capgemini Consulting or even Philips. Russell Harvey, Radix's chief technology officer, have teamed up with Matthew Hine, who is a chief product officer, to create a series of videos. The best way to, to understand it is to try to program Uniswap right. in other places right. and just see how it feels. Do you feel like you're really pushing around native tokens? Is that your feeling? I guarantee you, when you come to the end, you've done it in script, you go, yep, that was the one, that was a native token. Russell's extensive knowledge of technology provides the perfect backdrop for the discussions as he's been a CTO at H3 Labs and even CEO of Calendar Research. Last but not least, Adam Simmons is a chief strategy officer who seems to have mainly marketing experience from Level Up Media Limited. Radix's team is one of the strongest in crypto despite the hefty workload on their CEO. However, there could be more internationalization to match my expectations. And now let's dive into their main white paper. I reviewed the Radix DeFi white paper the last year, not only in the review, but also in a standalone video. So I don't see the need to go through it again this time. So instead, I've prepared for you a quick presentation about Radix sharding. If you are going to shard, then shard in a deterministic way and shard massively. Let's take it all from the beginning and let's start talking about uncharted ledgers that are obviously, for instance, the Bitcoin or the previous version of Ethereum. Uncharted ledger is the ledger where each node carries entire blockchain. Uh, it's also called a single shard ledgers and it's obviously not sustainable once popular. That was the 
Ethereum's problem. That's why Ethereum 2.0 has been created. And that's why sharding has been introduced to crypto. But most of the projects, however, they shard from top to down, or it's also called vertical sharding. So that's the simple way to explain that is that the network is broken down into few sub networks where the over all the nodes are then split into nodes that serve that sub network or the other sub networks. That is a scaling. It solves some problems, but it introduces new problems. For instance, um, each sub network is obviously less secure because less nodes are in it. Also, different charts can't natively talk to one another. That's also why coordination or communication layer has been introduced to some of these projects, because such a layer tries, at least tries to solve the communication problem. However, Radix has taken radically different approach. It has taken scaling the other way around from bottom up or differently called also horizontal sharding. So the ledger consists of unimaginable, it's actually quintillions shards. In our case, two to the power 256 shards, which is something like close to the number of atoms in the universe or something like that. And you know you're going to need rules to decide what shard does this go. It's not a matter of, you're not at this point, you're not even thinking about the question of, well, which shard does the developer choose to deploy to? It's right. like, no, 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 it will be automatically sharded. Right. And you just have to come up with the rules of how you assign shards. So it's, it's a different design philosophy from the start. Each smart contract or each component, because smart contracts in Radix are called components, each component has one shard. Also, we can differentiate like a node with um, better hardware can serve more shards and a Raspberry Pi can serve less shards. Also, also, that can be dynamically adjusted. The special thing here is that the consensus mechanism looks only for relevant shards. That's why the transactions can be atomic. So they either happen all at once or they don't happen at all. So no more pending transaction. <laughs> Hello, all MetaMask users, right? Unrelated transactions are also, thanks to this, processed in parallel. And that's why you can add more nodes and you can scale the whole network linearly. Let's have a look at the tokenomics with the token next. When researching the tokenomics, I always check the CoinGeekos and the CoinMarketCaps numbers with the official numbers from the project. Because in some instances, the numbers like circulating supply can be very wrong at CoinGeeko or CoinMarketCap. However, in Radix's case, the CoinGeeko is correct and there indeed is around 10 billion Radix in circulation at the moment. So the total market cap of all Radix tokens in circulation today is somewhere below $1 billion. So the total market cap of all Radix tokens in the circulation today is below $1 billion. The main purpose of the token is to secure the network as the network is DPoS, as well as to pay the transaction fees, which are burned. The release schedule is, I think, unique because additional XRD tokens are locked in stablecoin reserves for the purpose to support in the future potential Radix native stablecoins. And additional 12 billion Radix will be minted over the next 40 years as incentive to stakers. Since none of the tokens is used by the team for development, so my next question naturally was, how is the development funded? And the answer is simple. The, they raise capital. Even recently, as this article on Coindesk shows, they raised additional $10 million through DWF Labs. And now finally, let's have a look at the price action of the token itself. This is the Radix tokens chart on weekly and it's not my favorite chart at all. It kind of looks like, um, if I didn't know Radix well enough, it, would, it kind of looks like a pump and dump scheme. Let's consider that this was indeed the bottom. Then we have just retested the first local top or a first swing point. We might revisit this area one more time 
before the Babylon is actually released. And if this was the bottom, then another profit take would be 22 to 28.5 cents. However, if we are gonna go lower, then obviously uh, the Radix is going to break the low as well. I'm not going to try to guess how deep is it gonna go because Fibonacci would be the way to, to guess that or to do some calculation and Fibonacci is not my forte. So um, in that case, obviously, if we make a new low, then the next profit take is going to be the very same structure where we are at the moment, so somewhere below 10 cents. Finally, looking at the roadmap, Radix is approaching its major milestone called Babylon. Babylon mainnet ships in Q2 2023. This is when the full stack for DeFi goes live. This is when the Web3 ecosystem on Radix goes live when users, assets and dApps can start really flowing into the Radix public network. So if you have a DeFi or Web3 idea, today is the time to get excited. And the next in line is the chapter devoted to the massive community of Radix. One of the sayings says that the community brings value and Radix has always had one of the most active and engaging and passionate communities out there. So let's have a look today. After reviewing Radix a year later, the community seems to be less active than before. My drafted review received fewer comments and had less people engaging with it compared to the previous one. I suppose the bear market is really taking its toll. Radix's Discord is among the best I've seen with about 1000 people online. Telegram is equally large and active. Reddit seems to be less active these months though, with about only 15 people online. Twitter has staggering 200,000 followers, from which majority seems organic, at least to me. We believe the global financial system needs to be radically better. Their YouTube is now with 10,000 subscribers and is releasing fancy animated explainer videos such as this one. Cerberus a novel distributed ledger technology that can scale linearly to billions of users and achieve millions of transactions per second. By using a parallel processing consensus algorithm, Cerberus will finally put an end to network congestion and spiraling transaction costs. Much needed in Radix. Well done. Radix. Radically different DeFi. Radix's new studio where they film their videos looks super cool. Hello everyone and welcome to another roundtable with Russell and Matthew. Also mind all the Radix team items such as t-shirts, mugs or even Matthew's smartwatch have the Radix team gradient on them. Just a small sample, a small detail of Radix's strong community and clever marketing. We are building a decentralized chess app. We are implementing a chess engine on top of Scripto and making it playable. I'm ready to get sweaty. I mean, I even talking right now, I feel I feel anxious to get back out there and coach. You know, throw me in, coach, put me in. That's how I feel. Just put me in, coach. Rockstar Red Fu's marketing collaboration proved to be beneficial for Radix. To further promote their brand, they even employ some members of the community as ambassadors who hold promotional events and meetups. In spite of the mentioned frustration, the Radix community is still highly active and going strong. Last but not least, Radix has 91 repositories on their GitHub pages. And with saying that, we are ready to conclude the review. The token's price performance has been abnormally depressed over the past year even worse than most of the other layer ones. This has understandably caused lots of frustration amongst the community members as compared to a year ago. Furthermore, I am a bit concerned about the lack of internationalization within its core team. This may turn out to be one of its weaknesses, despite Radix being one of the most technically advanced layer one networks on the planet.